Violence and Freddy's games have always been quite consistent at providing a serviceable gameplay experience, usually through its use of a length of progression in its games. You start off learning the basics, the game tests your skills by adding more threats and different mechanics as you progress, and then presents you with one final test to see if you have honed your skills. It's a reward winning formula, and the last time this formula was used in an Affiance of Freddy's game was Ultimate Custom Night, which I would argue has one of the best progression arcs in any Affiance of Freddy's games. From the early lessons on how to play, to the ultimate challenge in Affiance of Freddy's history, Ultimate Custom Night provides the perfect gameplay experience, and in this video, I'm going to explain how it achieves that. But, real quick, if at any point you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, as I'll be thanking every single subscriber at 10k. But anyways, onto the video. This is how Ultimate Custom Night provides the perfect gameplay experience. As a concept for a game, Ultimate Custom Night seems extremely overwhelming to the player, and I mean it's completely understandable as to why. There are a total of 50 threats and a lot of different mechanics, not even mentioning the controls. You have to worry about four doors, a duct and vent system, temperature, noise, and keeping an eye on certain characters, not to mention the music box is back. It's a lot for a new player for sure. The sheer amount of things to worry about and trying to juggle everything may seem completely impossible, but in actuality, this game does an amazing job at balancing all the mechanics, and I would argue that the hardest part of playing Ultimate Cast tonight, besides the final challenges, is actually just starting to play Ultimate Cast tonight. For a quick gameplay explanation, Ultimate Castle Night features the game concept since the first one. Survive from 12am to 6am. You have 50 different characters, and if you want to learn how they all work in detail, check out my video breaking down all the characters AI. But a quick summary of all the characters is what they do. You have two doors on the left and right, where characters such as Freddy, Nightmare Fredbear, Nightmare and Ballora will attempt to get into your office, and have to be shut out using the door. Some of these characters also have sound cues to instill a reaction out of the player and the doors can be controlled in and out of the camera system. Some characters, like Rockstar Chica and the plushes, will approach the door but require you to perform a different action, such as putting down a wet floor sign or buying a plushie in the camera to fend them off. Others, like Lefty, Music Man and Jacko Chica, will only pursue you if your noise or temperature is too high, so you have to make sure to keep track of those levels at all time. You also have two vent systems, the one on your right where the balloon children will attempt to get in, these guys will knock out your utilities, and also Scraptrack can kill you from there as well if you're not careful. The top vent features a wide variety of characters, such as with Chica, Mangle, Springtrap, Enid, and Molten Freddy, and you have to block them out with the top vent. However, some characters will camp in the entrance of the top vent if you let them get there, and so you have to use a vent snare to block them from ever reaching that position. The duct system features the mediocre melodies, and you can only close one of the ducts at a time, and you can distract them with the audio lure as well, or even push them back with the heater. Some characters hang out on different cameras, and you need to keep track of them so they don't come and kill you. These characters are Foxy, Puppet, Chica, Toy Freddy, and Funtime Foxy, and these guys are arguably the most difficult to deal with out of all of these characters. There's a bunch of office animatronics like Nightmare Balloon Boy and Rockstar Freddy who require you to either flash them with a flashlight at the right time, or pay them to hold them from actually killing you. Other characters, like Scrap Baby, Golden Freddy, Toy Chica, and Toy Bonnie, will just enter and you need to deal with them accordingly, usually with the mask. Then you have your distraction characters, like Phone Guy, Old Man Consequences, and El Chip, who will make your life living hell if you do not deal with them. You can also generate Faz Coins by successfully blocking characters, which you can use to buy a Death Coin to remove certain characters from the night. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and Dee Dee can spawn characters at random, so be careful about that. Understandably, that seems extremely overwhelming, however, once you actually get started and begin to follow the process, you start to learn how everything connects together. The game also has a solid way to learn the gameplay, with 16 preset challenges for you to attempt. The way these challenges are actually set up means that the player will get a grasp on how to actually play the game, especially when you play them in order. The first couple of challenges with Bear's Attack show off different mechanics such as Freddy at the door, Twin Toy Freddy on the camera, as well as the Death Coin, Fence, and Temperature, and Noise, basically teaching you the basics. With challenges like Pay Attention and Ladies Night, the game throws different mechanics at you, with Nightmare Balloon Boy, Chica, The Puppet, and with challenges such as Springtrap and Nightmare's Attack, you get characters like The Plushes, Nightmare Freddy, Nightmare Eon, and test previous characters at different AI levels of you to see if you've really nailed the mechanics. You then get four really hard challenges at the end. Old Friend tests a combination of the hardest mechanics and whether you can deal with them all at once, while the three Chaosers set up the two main gameplay loops 
before Chaos 3 combines both of them, and Chaos 3 is probably the most like the final challenge of the game, 50-20 mode. So already, the game has in place a preset system to help you learn the mechanics for the game, but what if you don't want to do the challenges and learn for yourself? Well, with the way that the difficulty curve in UCN works, it is entirely possible. Most difficulty curves are pretty even, with the game getting much harder with the more characters you add. However, in Ultimate Custonite, some characters will do very little or others require you to completely change the way you play. A large number of the characters are just distraction characters and adding them in doesn't actually do that much. The point system also encourages you to push further and further, trying to get as many characters in as possible while allowing you, the player, to choose which characters you actually want to add to the mix. The game does a great job encouraging the player to add more characters, and every goal you achieve makes you feel like a star. 3,000 points, 4,000 points, 5,000 points, 6,000 points, 7,000 points, 8,000 points, and 9,000 points. At about 9,000, things start to get tricky, and that's where I'm at right now. But even though I haven't beaten 5020, I still attempt this game from time to time, and it's just because it's a lot of fun. Balancing all the mechanics is surprisingly fun, and I think it is easily the most accessible Final Fantasy Freddy's game to the general public because of its lack of horror which causes you to focus on the challenge at hand. This game is heavily criticised for its lack of jump scare effectiveness and just how low quality it actually is, but let's be real, that is not the focus of this game. The focus is on the gameplay and balancing all the mechanics without being overwhelmed rather than trying to make a game scary. And if I'm being honest, I don't think making this game actually scary with good jump scares would actually make this game work at all. With how you are meant to play these custom night challenges, the fear factor is very rarely brought up. The only Final of Freddy's custom night that I would actually even consider to be remotely scary is probably the first game one, and that's a stretch, because it's literally only because of Freddy's constant laughter, which just makes it a really creepy experience. But overall, it's still not really that scary. So yeah, I think this game being scary would have just ruined the overall experience and made it a bit redundant, as it eventually the scares would just not affect you since you were more focused on actually beating the challenges rather than, you know, getting scared. Now the general gameplay loop can be defined as just chilling until you need to reset ventilation if you're only playing with like one or two characters. However, the, you notice that the more characters you actually add to the game, the harder just chilling and waiting actually becomes. One thing that this game does quite well is approve upon all of its previously done mechanics, especially some of the weaker mechanics of the previous games. For example, let's look at the music box. In Final Fantasy Freddy's 2, where it was first introduced, the music box basically completely forced the player to look at one camera without any chance of looking at really anything else. In this game, there's a button that you can use to wind the music box without even having to enter the cameras, allowing you to look at other things. And look, yes, I know that one of the main strategies of this game is by using the cam stall strat, which makes the cameras basically redundant. But, it is actually entirely possible to play this game while using all the cameras. In fact, this is what Markiplier ended up doing, and it's quite impressive to see him do it, even though he didn't actually beat 5020 mode. Another mechanic that gets fixed in this game is the mask mechanic, which unlike Final Fantasy 2, doesn't overstay its welcome with characters just, you know, sitting there for 5 seconds staring at you. You notice that it's all Final Fantasy 2 mechanics they fixed in this game. Not only that, but the cameras, the doors, and the mouse movement have all been refined for optimised gameplay and precise movement, allowing you to make quick decisions and execute moves as effectively as possible. The game provides a ton of freedom to the player, while also encouraging them to progress further and further. And for those who are able to push the game to its absolute furthest limits, they'll be met with the infamous 50-20 mode. All 50 characters at their max AI, the highest possible score of 10,600 due to the secret characters that 5020 mode actually adds. 5020 mode is not for the faint of heart. The first 30 seconds are probably the most overwhelming and intense moments of any game, and especially of any Final Fantasy Freddy's game. You have to set up your counters for the vent and duct characters, as well as farm fast coins to death coin one of the characters, the main strap being Funtime Foxy because of how annoying they are to deal with. Then you have to make sure that you can restore the plushes and pray RNG is on your side for Toy Freddy and Foxy, while remembering to heat up between camp flips for the ducks and keeping your temperature at a steady pace, as well as manage your power and deal with the six secret characters added in this night. On top of that, you need to manage all the crap that is happening in your office while not choking for the whole four and a half minutes and making sure that you don't hover your mouse over Nightmare on at all. And if you manage all of that, you've done it. 
you've beaten the ultimate challenge in Final to Freddy's. The final challenge of 5020 modes is unbelievably difficult, and beating it requires a ton of skill and a ton of luck, but most importantly it requires a ton of determination and commitment. If you don't put 100% into this challenge, you will never beat it. You have to stay focused, you have to stay determined and trust the process. 5020 is unlike any other challenge in any other Final Fantasy Freddy's game as it truly tests your ability to multitask and adapt to the situation at hand. It's truly a final test for the player and only the most committed will ever be able to achieve this ultimate prize of completing 5020 mode. A statue of Freddy that is cult. Okay, all jokes aside, it's pretty impressive to be able to beat 5020 mode and everyone who has beaten it is a bloody champion. Now that I've gone over this game and everything that makes it so great, what actually makes it a perfect gameplay experience? Well, Ultimate Custom Night is just extremely effective. The goal is clear, the challenges are real and intense, the gameplay is fun and engaging, and the game encourages a ton of replayability. It is not a fully polished game, and for sure some aspects of it, like the character roster not being fully developed, may be upsetting to some of its more diehard fans. Can't believe they got rid of Withered Freddy and Withered Foxy. But I would argue besides the first and fourth game, this is the most accessible of any Final Fantasy Freddy's game, as any players who enjoy a skill-based challenge won't have to sit through five nights of horror to get to the challenges. Also, this game is just easily the most fun out of all the Final Fantasy Freddy's games, and anyone who wants to push themselves in gaming can just load up Ultimate Custom Night. There's a reason that I enjoy just casually throwing some runs into this game. The experience is just so efficient and the freedom is endless, out of all the Five Nights at Freddy's games, Ultimate Custom Night pushes the player further than ever before, and while it's not really a horror game, it's not trying to be. The experience is just as intended, and the gameplay experience is perfect. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Just a reminder, I'll be personally thanking everyone who has subscribed to me at 10k, so make sure you do so. Anyways, thanks for watching guys, I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video.